Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. I'm working on my 08335i with the N54 motor. I'm going to be installing a set of outlets on my turbos. The connection that goes from the actual turbo outlet to your intercooler on the hot side. So let's get this unboxed. Uh, just to let you know, these were provided by VRSF or VR Speed Factory. Uh, you can find them at vr-speed.com. I'm going to put a link in the description for where you can purchase these. And I'd like to thank them for providing the actual hardware. So let's get these unboxed and we'll talk about the actual components. So here's the one piece piping. It's made out of silicon. You have your adapter that goes on the actual turbo, V-band style. And then the actual outlet goes onto this. Here's the other side. As you can see, this goes between uh, right here to your actual factory intercooler piping and you have clamps to hold it all down. So as you can see, one on each turbo right here and then the piece that goes between here and here. So overall, it's a pretty complete kit. And it's going to take a few hours to install, but let's get the ball rolling. Alright, so we have to create some room. Uh, we're going to remove the coolant bottle and we're gonna remove the vacuum canisters to actually give us some working room from the top. So we have a 10 mil right here. Now if you take a look down in here, you'll see down at the bottom, there's another 10 mil. You wanna crack that loose and then just leave it sitting there. I recommend using a magnet tool to get to it. Now we'll remove these vacuum lines off the top. There's actually one more 10 mil back here. One more nut. Now we can lift up on this. Don't lift too far because you gotta remove the vacuum lines from the bottom. So, there's another 10 mil for the coolant bottle. You want to pop these vacuum lines off the actual coolant bottle. Over on the back side here. Hopefully you guys can make that out. There's a electrical connector right there gonna unplug that we're gonna lift this off I don't think any fluid will come out because the car is cold and you'll definitely have to make sure your car is cold before you do this job yeah. so we're good there all right so for now while I try to work on the back two connections I've moved the coolant bottle up and out of the way. I didn't have to actually drain it or anything like that. I just tipped it a bit and like just a, like not even a quarter of an ounce came out. So it's off to the side while I go after those connections and then eventually I'll move it back over here to go after the front connection. I'm not sure if the fan shroud's gonna have to come out or not. I'll definitely let you guys know. But let's get a look inside here. We can see the actual connection right there. So that's an Allen head. I'm gonna get set up on the tripod here and then we'll go after that. This is what I'm using, quarter inch with a five mil Allen head on it on one of these adapters. And I could get it on. Unfortunately, I found out that one of mine was loose. Actually, this one was finger tight. These turbos were changed before I bought the car. I don't know if it's been leaking boost out of there or whatnot, but so far all seems well, but that was basically finger tight. So that made things easy, I guess, but if you wanted to crack it free, you could do so with that combination of tools. Hopefully you can make that out. All I did was I got just a five mil Allen on our three eighths. I rotated the clamp over this way to be able to get it loose by hand, as you can see. 
There we go. We have to reuse this, so try not to bend it too far out of shape. So that just pops off. As you can see, I don't think I was leaking because it kind of inserts down into the tube, but that's loose now. All right, so I'm just doing some experimenting just to see if I can give you guys an easy way to do this job without removing too much stuff. So I already removed this metal clip that holds some of these vacuum lines and O2 sensor wires to the actual heat shield here. I'm going to take this heat shield out of the way. There's just some e-torx bits on there. And then I'm going to take the solenoid out over there just so I have room to stick my arm. I'll let you know how that goes and what's involved. I find there's three of these and they're E eight. So I've just removed this out of the way. Let's see how much it helps. If you look right there, you can see a direct line to the actual backside of that, right where I'm pointing. So I'm going to, I'm gonna to have to stand in front of where the camera would be anyway, but I'll let you know if I was able to get it from this angle since I removed the blue solenoids. All right, so here's an update. I use this. It's a five mil Allen actual screw bit. On one of these guys. So I did have to remove the heat shield and solenoids to be able to get my hand in there and crack it free, but it was definitely worth it, made things easier. So once it became a couple turns loose, it actually is coming out by hand. So I'm gonna go finish that off now and then we'll come back. All right, so I just slid the clamp up the actual tube. There we go, cut that off. So I don't have small hands, just FYI, I have pretty big hands. I was able to do it, just a couple bloody knuckles really, but I haven't been under the car yet, so I think it was worth it. I'm probably about an hour and a half in at this point. So we popped that off. And this popped off as well. So now we just have that front uh, front connection at the actual intercooler piping. And we'll see about whether or not we have to remove the fan shroud or how much is involved. But overall, just take your time. You can get it. Move, remove your valve cover and the heat shield with solenoid so you got lots of room to reach back there. And if you can get your hands on one of these, they're very handy. You'll have just enough room to be able to turn this and get it loose. That one wasn't finger tight, it was fully tight. So just to give you an idea. All right, so now that we have taken care of those two back connections, I'm gonna move the coolant bottle forward and we're gonna to try to go after the connection that goes to the intercooler up at the front. To me, it just looks a little too tight to, to try to squeeze my hand in there. So I'm gonna start removing some of the stuff up at the top. FYI, those are both T20. So I'm gonna remove the, the fan shroud. There's a screw right here. This was T27. So there's one torque screw that goes there. There is the electrical connection that goes here. And then you have this connection down here, which I would just use a pry bar to pop off, just like so. That pops off your actual charge pipeline. And you have, if you look down there, there's some tabs that you can kind of slide it out of. And same story goes here. You can slide it out of that groove there. You may have to finagle with it a bit to get it passed right here, but then we have to go to the bottom and remove a Torx screw that holds your transmission your uh, transmission cooler to the actual radiator. So let's go do that now. So I just undid the few screws that are up at the front of the splash shield and just kind of hung it down a little bit. And we can see that one 
Torx bit that has to come off before we can lift up on the fan shroud. So I'm gonna remove that now. So all I did was remove two eight mil screws here up at the front and then two eight mil screws here and then the screws up at the front here and I just let it hang. It's not all the way down. Just saves a bit of time because that's the only reason to be under the car <coughs> for this entire job. Just to remove that one screw. So as you can see that uh, that's all that has to be done. You don't really have to even be under the car while you do this. So I'm just trying to save some time, but at the same time I realize trying to work around that uh, fan trail is just going to be aggravating and a waste of time. So let's go up to the top and remove it now. As you can see, that was a bit of a joy to remove. Being sarcastic, obviously, but it does come out. It's just a tight squeeze. So as you can see, there's clear access once you actually pop off that clip there and undo that one screw and re release these tabs on the side there and there. It's just, it's a little finicky. Just keep that in mind. You just gotta kind of slide it this way, kind of tilt toward this way, and then get it around all this stuff before, uh, before you can lift up on it, but you did see how that gets done. Now I have clear access to my intercooler pipe, and as you can see, on my car, it's already been changed out because I have an aftermarket intercooler, but if you watch my intercooler upgrade video, you can use that as a guideline to see how you switch or take out the factory version of this with the C-clips, etc., and how to cut the clamp and all that. So I'd recommend you watch that, but otherwise, you know, Chances are you already have an aftermarket intercooler if you're bothering with inlets and outlets. So I'm gonna get that released and then we'll pop the tube out. All right, so we're ready to try to pull it out now. There we go. Removed. If you look down here, you can see where we're supposed to insert this piece. So I'm gonna get that set up with the V-band. All right, so this one has to go here. Up at the front, make sure your O-ring is on there. I'm not gonna mess around with that till the end because we gotta get the angle right to keep it away from the exhaust manifold as best as possible. I'm getting the other clamp now and we're gonna go check out the back. Should be able to make that out now. This is just a straight shot. I wanna angle this clamp in such a way that I can easily tighten it. As you can see, I got that on there and I oriented the clamp in such a way that I could easily tighten that. I checked that my wastegate can still move completely without hitting anything. Full actuation. You know how this downpipe uh, uh, clamp can actually be in the wrong position where you wouldn't have full fit race gate uh, movement. I have that. It's not touching that, so I'm safe. You know, it's hard to say where on your car that will be and what position it will be in, whether or not it's an easy spot or not um, to access from the top. But on my car, it wasn't. It was in the worst spot, but I still have it. Was able to get it off, and while putting things back together. I just opted to put it in an easier location. So, and for this one, it's not fully torqued down yet. I'm thinking I'll slide the back one on and I'll see where this naturally wants to end up and then I'll snug that down. I should still have some room to do so. So let's try that now. So before anything, I'm gonna stick this piece in here. A little coupler. About halfway. It should be good. That way we can, I'm gonna actually tighten up that clamp. Since I have that tube in there now, I'm gonna tighten up this clamp. So you get the idea, I'm gonna do that so that we'll be ready to insert the, the actual uh, outlet. So 
So I got the positioning of this figured out. You basically want to turn it until it's about an eighth of an inch away from this tube here. So you just rotate it until it's about an eighth of an inch away. Tighten that down and then pull the whole thing as forward. Pull the whole thing forward as much as you naturally can. And now I've done all that. It's resting in its natural position. So I'm gonna insert that coupler on there. So I'm gonna go ahead and insert the clamp on that, tighten that down, and then we'll adjust this. All right, so the clamp is on there and it's in a position that it won't interfere with anything. So I'm gonna go after the clamp on that rear turbo now. I'm gonna give that a final snug down just to be sure. All right, so that's good and snug. And I wanna make sure this is away from the manifold as best as possible. Now this is optional, but it seems like a good idea. I'm going to put a reflective heat tape on here to actually um, minimize the chance of uh, uh, this melting. So I'm gonna clean this with alcohol swabs and then I'm going to apply that film. I'll show it to you. Didn't come with the kit, but I recommend it. I bought this uh, reflective uh, tape. I think it was $21 for this piece, so it's expensive. Next up, I want to get a piece around here before I put the clamp. All right, so there you go. As you can see, there's a decent gap there. It's not ideal. I would like to see more, but it's about as good as I can get it. But as you can see, uh, I've applied the gold foil right around it. So that should help reflect and minimize the risk of anything melting and nothing is kinked up. It's kind of sitting at a natural angle. I have good gaps and everything, so I'm gonna throw the clamp on there now and uh, we'll start buttoning things up. All right, so pretty important detail. Um, I tried to put my cool bottle, bottle back in and it interfered with the actual pipe here. It's too long. They left it purposely long because it fits on multiple models. So we're gonna have to trim that short to be able to get it out of the way. We want it so that it doesn't interfere with the coolant bottle. So I'm gonna to have to trim that and I'll let you know approximately how much I trimmed it. Okay, so I of course did it in a few stages, but I cut about four inches off of that. And uh, if you see right now, I actually have it so that, this is where the tube, I rotated it actually even more. When you cut this thing shorter, it actually causes it so that it uh, allows this tube to rotate even more and not contact this other tube so i rotated it more i got my gap again you know it's not a whole lot but it's about as you know three eighths of an inch or a quarter inch or three eighths of an inch it's about as much as i can get but it worked out so that the clamp is actually right at the heat point of the vent manifold and i did wrap it really thoroughly to avoid any melting and this is just for radiant heat from here. It's not likely, but just to be safe, I wrapped that. And I made sure I cleaned it with alcohol and whatnot so it's really sticky and it's on there good. And now if I were to put the coolant bottle back in place, it's not gonna make contact with this tube. And also my front mount piping and everything is not getting bound up like before because that was pushing everything too far forward. So you don't have to cut the rear outlet you're supposed to just put that on straight and then you have to cut this one to size because this is meant to fit on multiple vehicles, not just an E90 or E92. So if you notice, and nothing's bound up here, nothing's getting pinched, it looks fine. It still moves freely, that seems good. The width of this piping is such that it doesn't really need you to remove this uh, shield to be able to make it fit. All seems well just as it is. The only tricky part is this front uh, outlet has to be cut to get you some gap. Rotate the tube, lock everything down, and uh, make sure. I 
it's not included with the kit as I said, but this is, will just give you some peace of mind if you're gonna get that type of gap. You don't have to worry about melting the actual silicone if you do choose to wrap it. And you can buy this stuff at your local auto parts store. So now I'm in a position to start throwing things back together and uh, we'll conclude soon. All right, so car's back together. Everything went smoothly with regards to putting all the ancillaries back together. And it's actually been over a week since I finished the job. Just wanted to make sure everything was good with regards to doing some hard back-to-back -back pulls and highway cruising, etc., to ensure there's no melting or any issues with clearance. And I've had none whatsoever. That heat shielding is probably helping the cause, but regardless, I don't think it's mandatory. It just puts your mind at ease, as you can see. All's looking well. Definitely uh, feel a power increase, and I'm gonna do a follow-up video uh, using virtual dyno just to get an idea of how much power it did add. But all in all, uh, it's easier to do than the inlets. Definitely easier than the inlets, but you should still devote a good afternoon to the job because uh, it is still involved. And overall, I'm happy. The combination of the charge pipe and the outlets really made a big difference. It's making it so that second gear has a hard time with traction, even though I have Pilot uh, Super Sport uh, Michelin tires. So definitely recommended for a stock turboed N54 if you like lots of low end grunt. And uh, it's not too expensive for what it is. So once again, uh, I'd like to thank VRSF or VR-speed.com, VR Speed Factory for providing the hardware. I'm going to put a link in the description with regards to where you can buy the outlets. And um, if you guys have questions, please throw comments in the comment section. And thanks for watching. Good luck. Consider subscribing for more content like this.